Welcome back to World History Explored. Today, we will talk about Venezuela's history, which is often tangled in blame. Some say socialism ruined everything, others point to a harsh dictator who devastated the poor, and some highlight the country's overdependence on oil. By now, you've likely come across various reasons for Venezuela's crisis, each colored by the speaker's political stance. The truth is, the situation is the result of many complex factors, and it's hard to get a clear picture because people often use the crisis to push their own agendas. So, we dove into the internet and consulted some impartial researchers to uncover what really went wrong in Venezuela's history. The history of Venezuela is deeply rooted in its ancient past. Archaeologists have uncovered evidence of the earliest known inhabitants of the region through leaf-shaped flake tools and other implements found on the high river terraces of the Pedregal River in western Venezuela. These artifacts, dating from 15,000 to 9,000 years BP, include spear tips from a site in northwestern Venezuela known as El Jobo. Other notable sites, such as Tema Tema, Yellow Muaco, and El Jobo in Falcón, have also provided insights into these early societies. These early inhabitants coexisted with megafauna like megatheriums, glyptodonts, and toxodonts. Around 9,000 to 7,000 years BP, during the Meso-Indian period, these early hunters and gatherers began shifting to other food sources and establishing the first tribal structures. By the time of the Timoto Cuica culture, which flourished in present-day Merida, Venezuela, the complexity of pre-Columbian societies was evident. The Timoto Cuica were known for their well-planned permanent villages, surrounded by irrigated fields and equipped with water storage tanks. Their houses were constructed from stone and wood with thatched roofs, and they practiced peaceful agriculture, growing crops like potatoes and ulucos. They also left behind works of art, including anthropomorphic ceramics, and are credited with inventing the arepa, a staple of Venezuelan cuisine. In 1498, on his third trip to the Americas, Christopher Columbus sailed near the Orinoco Delta and landed in the Gulf of Paria. He was blown away by a massive flow of fresh water that pushed him off course and wrote to Isabella and Ferdinand, saying he felt like he had found heaven on earth. He marveled at how such a huge amount of fresh water was so close to salt water, and he thought it was either a sign of paradise or an incredible discovery, since he'd never seen anything like it before. Caracas, founded in 1567 in the central coastal region, became a key location due to its proximity to the port of La Guara, its defensible position in a mountain valley, and its fertile, healthy climate. By the late 18th century, some Venezuelans started resisting colonial rule. Spain's neglect of its Venezuelan colony sparked a growing interest in learning among Venezuelan intellectuals. Unlike other Spanish territories, Venezuela had more external sources of information, though only the Mantuanos, Venezuelan Creole elites, had access to good education. The Mantuanos, also known as Gran Cacaos because of their wealth, were seen as arrogant and insistent on maintaining their privileges over the mixed-race Pardo majority. The term Mantuanos is still used in Venezuela to describe someone who is pretentious. The first organized attempt to overthrow colonial rule in Venezuela happened in 1797, led by Manuel Gol and José María España. Inspired directly by the French Revolution, their movement was crushed with the help of the Mantuanos because it pushed for drastic social changes. Francisco de Miranda, a hero of the French Revolution, is closely linked with the fight for independence in Latin America. He dreamed of an independent empire that would unite all the territories formerly under Spanish and Portuguese control, stretching from the Mississippi River to Cape Horn. He imagined this empire being led by a hereditary emperor called the Inca as a tribute to the great Inca Empire and governed by a bicameral legislature. Miranda also proposed the name Colombia for this empire after the explorer Christopher Columbus. With some informal help from the British, General Miranda attempted to invade the Captaincy General of Venezuela in 1804. Britain was at war with Spain, which was allied with Napoleon at the time. 
In November 1805, Miranda went to New York and began secretly organizing a filibustering expedition to liberate Venezuela. He hired a ship with 20 guns, renamed it Leander after his eldest son, and set sail for Venezuela on February 2, 1806. However, his attempt to land in Ocumar de la Costa was unsuccessful. Miranda spent the following year in the British Caribbean, waiting for reinforcements that never arrived. When he returned to Britain, he found more support for his plans from the British government. In 1808, a large military force was assembled to attack Venezuela, led by Arthur Wellesley. However, when Napoleon invaded Spain, the situation changed, turning Spain into a British ally. As a result, the force was redirected to fight in the Peninsular War instead. Events in Europe played a key role in leading to Venezuela's declaration of independence. The Napoleonic Wars weakened Spain's control over its empire and unofficially put Britain on the side of the independence movement. In May 1808, Napoleon forced Ferdinand VII of Spain to abdicate, along with his father, Charles IV. Napoleon then installed his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, as King of Spain. This sparked Spain's own war of independence against French rule, even before the Spanish-American Wars of Independence began. In response, the Spanish resistance formed the Supreme Central Junta to govern in the name of Ferdinand VII. The first significant defeat for Napoleonic France came at the Battle of Balien in Andalusia in July 1808, where future figures like Pablo Morillo, Emeterio Ureña, and José de San Martín fought against French General Pierre Dupont. Despite this victory, the French soon regained the upper hand and advanced into southern Spain, forcing the Spanish government to retreat to Cadiz. There, the Supreme Central Junta dissolved itself and established a five-person regency to manage the state until the full Cortes of Cadiz could be converted. News of the events soon reached Caracas, but it wasn't until April 19, 1810, that the city's council, or Cabildo, decided to follow the example of the Spanish provinces from two years earlier by declaring the First Republic of Venezuela. Other provincial capitals like Barcelona, Cumana, Merida, La Asunción, Barinas, and Trujillo quickly did the same. The newly formed Junta Suprema de Caracas was made up of self-appointed elite members who claimed to represent the pardos, free blacks, and even slaves. However, the new government struggled to maintain its alliance with the pardos, who still had unresolved issues with the mantuanos. Some mantuanos, including a young 27-year-old Simon Bolivar, saw the creation of the junta as a step toward full independence. The Venezuelan War of Independence kicked off, happening at the same time as the struggle in New Granada. On December 17, 1819, the Congress of Angostura declared Gran Colombia an independent nation. After two more years of fighting, Venezuela gained independence from Spain in 1821, led by its most famous figure, Simón Bolívar. For a while, Venezuela was part of the Republic of Gran Colombia, along with present-day Colombia, Panama, and Ecuador, until 1830 when Venezuela broke away and became its own sovereign country. Sucre went on to liberate Ecuador and served as the second president of Bolivia. Venezuela remained part of Gran Colombia until 1830, when a rebellion led by José Antonio Páez led to the declaration of an independent Venezuela on September 22. Páez became the first president of the newly formed state of Venezuela. The wars of independence were devastating, with Venezuela losing between a quarter to a third of its population during these two decades, including about half of those of European descent. By 1830, the population was estimated at around 800,000. The colors of the Venezuelan flag hold symbolic meanings. Yellow represents the land's wealth. Blue stands for the sea that separates Venezuela from Spain, and red honors the blood shed by the heroes of independence. Slavery in Venezuela was abolished in 1854, the 19th century in Venezuela was marked by political instability and periods of dictatorial rule. The Junta ruled from 1948 to 1958, 
with Perez Jimenez becoming the main power player, especially after Chalbode's mysterious death during a botched kidnapping in 1950. When the Junta lost the 1952 election, they ignored the results and installed Jimenez as president. However, he was forced out on January 23, 1958. To stabilize the young democracy, the major political parties, Acción Democrática, COPE, and Union Republicana Democrática, minus the Communist Party, signed the Puntolfio Pact, ensuring AD and COPE dominated Venezuelan politics for the next four decades. During the presidencies of Romulo Betancourt, 1959-64, his second term, and Raul Leone, 1964-69, Venezuela faced significant guerrilla movements, most of which disbanded under Rafael Caldera's first term, 1969-74. Caldera's 1968 win marked the first time a party other than Democratic Action, COPE, took the presidency through a Democratic election. The new Democratic order wasn't without its challenges. Betancourt survived an assassination attempt in 1960, orchestrated by Dominican dictator Rafael Trujillo, while leftist groups excluded from the Pontofio Pact started an insurgency, forming the Armed Forces of National Liberation, with backing from the Communist Party and Fidel Castro. In 1962, they attempted to destabilize the military, but failed. Betancourt also introduced the Betancourt Doctrine, recognizing only governments elected by popular vote. In 1973, Carlos Andreas Perez was elected president during an oil boom, which led to a spike in Venezuela's income as oil prices surged. The oil industry was nationalized in 1976, leading to massive public spending and increasing external debts. However, when oil prices plummeted in the 1980s, the economy took a severe hit. The government's devaluation of the currency in 1983 worsened living standards, and economic mismanagement, rising poverty, crime, and political instability followed. Economic crises in the 1980s and 1990s led to political turmoil. The Caracazo riots in 1989 during Carlos Andreas Perez's second term saw hundreds killed by security forces in response to economic austerity measures. This unrest fueled Hugo Chavez's February 1992 coup attempt, followed by another in November of the same year. Perez, who had been re-elected in 1988, was impeached on embezzlement charges in 1993. Ramon José Velázquez served as interim president from 1993 to 1994. In March 1994, Chávez was pardoned by President Rafael Caldera, which allowed him to re-enter politics. Chávez won the presidency in 1998 and was re-elected in 2000, 2006, and 2012. He also won a presidential referendum in 2004, maintaining power until his death in 2013. In recent years, Venezuela has faced severe economic collapse, with shrinking output and rampant hyperinflation causing shortages of basic goods like food and medicine. Government mismanagement and U.S. sanctions have led to a drastic drop in oil production and underinvestment. Despite the easing of some sanctions in 2023, the U.S. reimposed sanctions in 2024 due to Venezuela's failure to meet fair election conditions. And that's that for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel, World History Explored, for more updates on the latest movies and shows. Don't forget to click the bell icon so you never miss an update from us. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.